Hindu, Hindu karma versus Islam. Description, a brief description of Hindu karma, a concept that is often embraced but misunderstood. The doctrine of reincarnation and the laws of karma are not compatible with Islam. Karma is a Sanskrit word meaning actions or deeds, and a spiritual concept in several Eastern religions, primarily Hinduism and Buddhism. Generally speaking, it is the principle of retributive justice determining a person's state in this life and in his reincarnations. Kar means the physicality of action and ma means producing or creating. Thus, karma is that which is created or produced by one's physical organs. However, karma as a concept does not mean only physical actions, because mental actions also create karma. The concept of karma in the West, which is vastly different and often misunderstood, has developed over the past two centuries. Its popularity can be traced back to the formation of the Theosophical Society. The society modified and introduced Hindu beliefs to the West, but this view of karma is only loosely connected to the Hindu, Buddhist, Sikh or Jain philosophies. In some ways, the concept of karma that was developed in the West resembles the Islamic understanding of righteousness, rather than the principles of Hindu karma. This idea of karma has gained enormous popularity and is often expressed in popular phrases such as What goes around comes around and you will reap what you sow. Many people express the principles of karma in their everyday lives without realizing that reincarnation is a major doctrine of the laws of karma. Some people deny reincarnation while accepting the idea that positive actions will be rewarded whilst negative ones will be punished. They often view karma as a law of spiritual dynamics related to actions in their daily lives. This definition of karma suggests that actions can influence the future's quality and has become very popular. As mentioned before, some people embrace karma without understanding its relationship to reincarnation and the immutable nature of its laws. Reincarnation refers to recurring rebirths or the transmigration of the soul from one physical body to another. In Hinduism, karma is regarded as a fundamental law that is automatic and mechanical. It is not imposed by God, or a God, it is universal and cannot be interfered with. It is completely impersonal, and it is believed to be wholly just and fair. This karmic law is applicable to all living beings, including plants, animals, and microorganisms. Hindu karma tells us that when a person with good deeds dies, he goes to the next world through the path of light and enjoys the heavenly pleasures. When the karma that he had accumulated over his lifetime is exhausted, he returns to the earth to continue his life in a new incarnation. When a person with evil deeds dies, he goes to the dark world along a path of darkness and suffers there until his bad karma is exhausted, after which he returns to the earth reincarnated. Thus the consequence of having lived, what is, in Hinduism, considered a good or a bad life is exhausting karma in a pleasurable way or suffering in darkness. When the soul begins its new life, it is free to begin again, accumulating both good and bad karma and attempting to free itself from the cycle of rebirth. When discussing karma and Islam, it is important to understand that Islam categorically rejects any concept of reincarnation. In Islam, we have one life, with one chance to get it right, and then we experience one death. There is no going back and no moving between species or genders. Until when death comes to one of them, he says, My lord, send me back, so I may do good in that which I left behind. Never. It is only a word he is saying, and behind them, the disbelievers, is a barrier until the day they are resurrected. Quran 23 hours 99 minutes and 100. Until when death comes to one of these idolaters and he sees what is going to befall him, he says regretfully over his life that has escaped him and his deficiency regarding Allah. O oh Lord, return me to the worldly life. Actions when I return to it. Never. The matter is not as you regested. It is only a statement he is uttering. If he were to return to the worldly life, he would not fulfill what he promised. These people who have died will remain in a barrier between the world and the afterlife until the day of resurrection and rising. Thus, they will not return from it to the world, to make up for what they lost and to correct what they spoiled. al 99-100 Death is the end of our transitory life in this world and the beginning of our infinite life in the hereafter. Islam, therefore, requires us to believe in paradise and hell. We are born into this life, and then we die. After we are resurrected, we will begin a new and everlasting life in the hereafter. God also explains that if we were to go back and try again, it would be pointless because we would undoubtedly repeat our mistakes. But if they were returned to the world, they would certainly revert to that which they were forbidden. Quran 6:28. These idolaters forbid people from accepting the messenger as they themselves stay away from doing so. They do not let others benefit in the same way that they themselves do not benefit. By acting like this, they only destroy themselves, but they fail to realize that they are bringing about destruction. 
If you, O oh messenger, could only see them when they will be exposed to the fire of hell on the day of rising, and they will regretfully say, if only we could be sent back to the world. Not deny Allah's words and be from those who had faith in Allah, then you would see a remarkable sight of their trouble. They're saying that they would believe if sent back is a lie. Instead the statement that they used to keep hidden, which was by Allah, we were not idolaters, has appeared to them when their limbs gave testimony against them. If they were supposedly sent back to the world, they would return to the disbelief and associating partners with Allah that they had been prohibited from. So they are eyeing in their promise that they will believe if they are sent back. These idolaters say, there is no life but the life we presently have and we will not be raised to give account. If you, O oh messenger, could only see when those who denied the resurrection will be made to stand before their Lord, you would see a remarkable sight of their trouble when Allah will say to them. Is this resurrection that you used to deny not the truth about which there is no doubt? They will say, I swear by our Lord who created us, it is certainly true and there is no doubt about it. Allah will then say to them, taste the punishment that is a result of your denial of this day, which you used to reject in the life of the world. Those who deny the resurrection on the day of rising and regard standing before Allah to be far-fetched, are in utter loss. Until, when the hour comes upon them suddenly without any prior knowledge, they will say, because of extreme regret. Alas for us and what disappointment, due to our having been neglectful of Allah by disbelieving Him and not preparing for the day of rising. They will carry their evil actions on their backs. How terrible are those evil actions that they carry? Al-Anam 26-31 Our actions, deeds and beliefs determine our hereafter, and we have free will to choose how we behave. Thus, our behavior in this world is crucial. In order to guarantee our place in paradise, a believer must live a good and righteous life. Whoever acts righteously, whether male or female, and is a true believer, we will surely give them a good life, in this world with respect, contentment and lawful provision. And we shall pay them certainly a reward in proportion to the best of what they used to do, i.e., paradise in the hereafter. Quran 16 hours 97 minutes. Whoever does good deeds in accordance with the sacred law, whether male or female, while having faith in Allah, we will grant them in this world a good life. By their being pleased with Allah's decree, content and guided towards righteous actions. We will reward them in the afterlife in accordance with the best good deeds that they used to do in the world. al a 97 While there is no concept of karma in Islam, there is indeed a connection between our deeds and actions and our future, both in this world and in the next. Every person must face the consequences of their actions. But rather than being subject to an immutable law where man is helpless, Islam offers us ways to change our destiny and choose our destination. When we obey God's laws and instructions we are on a path to a blissful hereafter. If on the other hand, we choose to disobey God there is always a door open to forgiveness. God will accept our repentance and he makes it easy for us to turn to him. He judges all our actions and is the one who determines our ultimate outcome. Islam says that good actions lead to good outcomes and bad actions inevitably lead to bad outcomes. However, we have the chance to wipe out our sins with repentance and good behavior. Verily, good deeds wipe out misdeeds, i.e., small sins. That is a reminder for the mindful, those who accept advice. Quran 11 114 Maintain, O Messenger, the prayer in the best manner at the two ends of the day, at the beginning and end of the day. Also, maintain the prayer during the hours of the night. Good actions wipe out minor sins. This is a warning for those who pay attention and a lesson for those who accept. Be patient in doing what you have been instructed to do with respect to being upright and avoiding the things you have been prohibited from, such as transgression and leaning towards the wrongdoers. Allah will not cause the reward of those who do good to be wasted. Instead, He will accept from them the best of what they did and will give them their reward in accordance with their best actions. HUD 114-115 Prophet Muhammad, may the mercy and blessings of God be upon him, tells us to fear God and that following a bad deed with a good deed will wipe out the bad deed. He continues his advice by reminding us to have a good attitude and good manners towards others, at Termidi. The concept of karma, due to its undeniable and unbreakable association to reincarnation, is a theory that is not acceptable in Islam. However, karma, as it is incorrectly understood nowadays, is close to the Islamic idea that righteousness is always attainable. A person is strongly encouraged to be morally upright and respectful to everyone and everything on this earth. Islam is a set of guidelines made specifically for humankind by our Creator. Bibliography Castro, J. 2013 What is Karma? Accessed at Jairam, V. The Concept of Karma in Hinduism Accessed at
religionfacts.com karma, Hinduism. 2016, access that. Does the concept of karma exist in Islam? Scholar, Ustad Abdullah Anik Mishra. Answered by Ustad Abdullah Anik Mishra. Question, is there something similar in the Quran Islam that states that you will reap what you sow? Is it permissible to say that something is karma? Sources will be much appreciated. Answer, in the name of Allah, most merciful and compassionate. As salamu alaykum. Thank you for your question. Reaping what one sows, or tasting the fruits of one's actions whether good or bad, is definitely a concept in Islam. The consequences of some actions, such as respecting hurting one's parents, can play out in one's worldly life, but the main theater of the recompense of actions is in the hereafter. When we will be judged by Allah Most High. Since karma is not a true concept, it would not be permissible to cite it, rather all causes, effects and outcomes are from Allah alone and not an unseen, automated system. Reaping what one sows, in Islam. A total harvesting of the outcomes of one's deeds does not always happen in this life, but this is why there is divine judgment after death with perfect justice. Allah Most High says. And whoever does a speck of good, in life, will see it, on the day of judgment. And whoever does a speck of evil, will see it. Quran 100 8. So whoever did a good or righteous deed equal to the weight of a small ant, will see it in front of him. And whoever did an evil deed equal to that, will see that in front of him also. Al Zalzala, 7 8. It is not deeds, however, but the mercy and justice of Allah that determine each person's fate. The concept of karma. Karma is a belief from ancient Indian religions in which an unseen system keeps a running total of one's deeds throughout multiple lifetimes to determine one's status in fortune. Cast in wisdom through each stage of reincarnation. Since reincarnation is not a true concept, with humans having only have one life to live, and the one who records all deeds and informs us of them and creates their outcomes is our creator. There is no need to posit a theory of karma or cite it in one's speech. Was Salam Abdullah Anik Mishra Checked and approved by Faraz Rabani. Karma. Question. Assalamu alaikum WRWBR. As Muslims do we believe in karma? Answer. In the name of Allah, the inspirer of truth. Muslims do not believe in karma. Fundamentally, karma is a dermic philosophy of divine justice and works in tandem with dermic beliefs of reincarnation. The adherents of these religions believe that person who does good would reap the benefit of that good, either in this current cycle of life or a new rebirth. Similarly, a perpetrator of injustice and misdeeds would reap evil in this current cycle of life or their next cycle. These beliefs are in stark contrast to the Islamic system of divine justice. A fundamental aspect of our faith is that we will be accountable for our good and bad actions and will be assigned an abode in the hereafter. Allah describes himself in the Quran as the one who created death and life in order to test which of you is best in deeds. And he is the Almighty, all-forgiving, Q. 67 2. The one who created death and life to test you, O people, which one of you is better in terms of actions. He is the Almighty who no one can overpower, the forgiving of the sins of whichever of his servants repents to him. Al-Mulk, 2. Allah will reward the person who performs good deeds. Similarly, the wrongdoers will be questioned about their misdeeds. Concerning this, the Prophet, said. Whoever has oppressed another person concerning his reputation or anything else. He should beg him to forgive him before the day of resurrection when there will be no money, to compensate for wrong deeds, but if he has good deeds. Those good deeds will be taken from him according to his oppression which he has done, and if he has no good deeds, the sins of the oppressed person will be loaded on him. Bukhari, Hadith number 2449. Allah did not intend to create this earth as a perfect abode. In his infinite mercy and justice, he created life and death as a test to see who will exceed one another in good deeds. While a person may not receive justice in this world, one will receive justice in the court of Allah, the Almighty. We believe that Allah is omniscient and the just. Nothing escapes his knowledge, and a person will be accountable for their actions on the day of judgment. Can a person be punished for their bad deeds on this earth? Indeed. Can a person be rewarded for their good deeds on this earth? Certainly, however, this does not take place by necessity. There is no necessary causal link between good actions and rewards in this world. Similarly, there is no causal link between evil actions and punishment in this world by necessity. In conclusion, Muslims do not believe in karma. 
Instead, we believe that our system of divine justice is complete as one will be accountable for their actions in the court of Almighty Allah. And Allah knows best. Answered by Maulana Ikramal Hakmia. Checked and approved by Mufti Abdul Rahman Mangera. Mufti Zubair Patel.